What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this super quick guide, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about modding Schedule 1 and much more. Keep in mind, you'll find tons of useful Schedule 1 guides linked down below as well. Now let's get into it. Starting off at the very top, before we do anything with modding Schedule 1, as we're playing with the game's code, there may be unintended consequences. Always back up your save game, especially if you've made tons of progress. To do so, hold Start or the Windows key and press R to bring up this window here. Inside of this window here, type percentage local app data percentage low so local app data surrounded by percent signs with low straight after no slash nothing else hitting ok will open up a new file browser in the location c users your username app data local low inside of here you'll find a tvgs folder which is the game's developer schedule one and over here a saves folder here you'll find your steam id and inside of it every save game that you've created. Simply copy all of these files and paste them into a separate folder, such as your documents, downloads, etc. Keep the save safe. In case anything corrupts or goes wrong, you can always get back to it. Now that we backed up our save game, let's get to actually modding Schedule 1. Essentially, there are a few different ways that Schedule 1 can be modded. The most popular is through Melon Loader. Simply head across to the first link in the description down below, then scroll down here. If you can't scroll down, click Get Started, then scroll down, and we're looking for the automated installation. Simply click Download Latest for Windows here. Save this file and open it. When it opens up, we should be able to install Melon Loader for our game. Keep in mind, if you have any issues opening this window or launching the game, getting mods to work, on this page here, you'll also find requirements. In order to run Melon Loader, you must install this first link for 64-bit games and IL2CPP games, which includes Schedule 1. Unless you're using the alternate branch, which is using Mono instead, you need to download and install .NET 6.0 as well here. This first link is pretty simple. Just click it and it downloads an EXE straight away. Install it. .NET 6.0, on the other hand, takes you across to this page here. It's since been updated quite a bit. You'll see we recommend moving to a newer version like .NET 9. That's fine. Click this here, which will take us to the latest version. Now we can scroll down. You'll see a whole bunch of links. Look for .NET Desktop Runtime and then click the X64 right next to it down here. Then install this as you would any other installer and everything should be set up. .NET Runtime should be backwards compatible, so this is fine. Now we can reopen the actual Melon Loader installer if you were having any issues earlier, and you'll see this here. It should have automatically picked up your games installed on your system. These games were created with Unity and can be modded, so you can scroll down, find Schedule 1, and click it. Otherwise, you can choose Add Game Manually in the bottom right, and then navigate to where the game's installed. Usually, C, Program Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Schedule 1, select Schedule1.exe, and then choose Open. This should either open it or add to the list as well. As mine's here, I'll choose Schedule 1, and then we'll just click Install here. That's it. Wait for it to finish. OK, and we're done. I'd recommend clicking this button over here to open up a file browser in the Schedule 1 folder, where you'll see three new files, maybe more. Melon Loader, which is the actual mod loader itself, as well as the Mods folder over here, where we can place our mods that we download here. There are many different mods that you can download and install, and the list is growing every day. A popular source, but not the only source to download mods, is Nexus Mods. For this website, you will need to create a free account to download mods. Simply scrolling down through the trending mods, you can pick and install anything you wish, or you can download a mod pack. I'll download and install some of the most popular mods, which are probably pretty good to add to your install. Spook's Robbery Mod allows you to grab cash from cash registers and things like that. Whenever you want to download something, just choose Manual on the mod page. You'll be prompted you need Melon Loader. We already have this. Choose Download, then Slow Download, which is free. And assuming you're logged in, the mod should be downloaded. Usually, there'll be zip files with DLLs inside of them. All that you need to do is open up your Steam Apps Common Schedule 1 Mods folder, which we did automatically from the mod loader, but you can always get here in the future by finding Schedule 1 in Steam, right-clicking, hovering over Manage, and choosing Browse Local Files. Then, from this game's folder, opening up the Mods folder, capital M, here. If you don't have a Mods folder, just launch the game once, then close it, and the folder should be generated. 
To install your mods, just drag the DLLs into this mods folder here, and that's it. This mod is now installed. A couple of other pretty cool mods I installed are the minimap, improved employees if you want, faster watering, sowing, harvesting, pouring, etc. An increased stack limit mod if you wish, personally I skipped out on this one. Reshells, which allows you to automatically restock shells, which can be a bit cheaty, so consider adding this if you wish. Trash Lifetime is a super useful mod that simply just deletes trash when it gets too old, especially useful if you're in-game for a very long time. For this one, I chose Download, and you can see it's giving me multiple different options. Just choose Manual Download next to the usual, oftentimes most downloaded version. Mod Manager, which allows you to enable and disable mods from the main menu. Laundry Increased, if you'd like to raise the laundry amount from your different businesses, but again, this may be a bit cheaty. Quick save, super useful. Just hit escape and click save game in the bottom left. Quality bonus, which feels like it should be a default. Customers pay you more when you give them a better quality product, 5% per tier. Increased dealer inventory, obviously self-explanatory, but again, maybe just use jars or later bricks. And if you wish, again, possibly a bit cheaty, better dealers, another pretty popular mod, allows you to manage your dealers from the phone app. Automatically collect cash, change the dealer's cut, talk from anywhere, and unlimited customers, though that may come back to bite you as they still need to walk around to each different customer handing out their product, so keeping them specialized by area is probably still a very good idea. You'll find a guide for maximizing profit from dealers down below. Once you have all of the mods you want installed, placed in this mods folder, all that's left to do is launch up the actual game. This time when you launch up the game, you'll see a black window with tons of info. If any plugins are having errors, they'll definitely let you know inside of this window here, oftentimes with red text so you can pin them down and delete whichever plugin seems to be causing issues, crashes, and things like that. The first time you start up the game, it may take quite a while, especially because Melon Loader has to understand the game, things like that, but once it's started up at least once, it should be quite a bit quicker, if not pretty much normal, to just start up and get in-game. So if we continue here, you can already see in the extreme top right a minimap with a bit of info, although a lot of customers and things like that are missing, versus the usual map, as well as if you download the dealer's mod, it'll be in here. On the messages page, we can mark all as red, which is super useful. If I change the time using commands, I should get a ton of deals pretty much instantly. And inside of our messages, here you go, there's a bunch of different things here. Mark all as red, bam, the message icon disappears from the top right, top left, and of course, you can keep your phone a bit cleaner. So yeah, that's really that. Modding Schedule 1 is pretty much as simple as it gets. Drop the mods you wish to download and use in that folder there, and then just simply use them as you'd expect. They work pretty much flawlessly in-game, though keep in mind major game updates can break how certain mods work, and of course, each mod will need to be updated individually. You can choose to download mod packs from the Nexus Mods website or anywhere else, but keep in mind you're trusting another developer on top of that, as this is quite literally just code you're downloading and running on your system. And of course, mod packs are less likely to be updated as regularly as just normal mods that you can download and install yourself. So yeah, that's pretty much that. You now know the complete basics and even the more advanced things that you need to know about modding a schedule one. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.